Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 398. We're continuing with our lesson title, War of the Seeds. This will be part four. Scripture teaches, after the judgment command of the Lord, the fourth empire kings will obliterate the human order on the surface. Turn to Daniel 7.23. We're talking about radical change that is going to <clears throat> render everything that currently constitutes this reality null and void. It will be a totally new reality. Daniel 7. 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse, altered, changed, different from all kingdoms. So when the fourth empire rises, it's going to bring with it a totally different reality. The reality we live in now which is designed for Adamic, the Adamic race to live and flourish will no longer be in vogue because the Adamic race has disqualified itself from rulership over the surface world. Yes. Mr. Jones, right now we have a mechanized existence. Are we to imagine that no longer being part of our existence? Exactly. Those appearance aren't going to allow anything human to endure mm. of the human culture. Beside that, they look at the human culture so primitive that if they're going to stamp it flat and then there'll be nothing left. When you, when you look at this place, you won't have any comprehension that the human race ever reigned supreme on the surface world. It'll be obliterated. Just like when the Lord sets up the kingdom of God, you're not going to have any residue of the fourth empire. It's going to be obliterated. The only reality that will exist at that point is the reality of Elohim. When the fourth empire reality takes place, the only reality that it's going to allow is its own altered pseudo-existence. Everything about this reality will be obliterated. The human race's memory will be obliterated. Let me make a quick observation. Yes. <coughs> So the Fourth Empire, having been released, have had in their minds for millennia they've been incarcerated, which of course they have. Mm -hmm. They now become released. Mm -hmm. Are they under the impression that it's their qualities that have released them? Or are they fully aware that the, the Father is the one who has influenced them to be released? No, no, they're not going they've to They've got no idea at all, just the door's open, let's go. When a, when a criminal escapes, right. the criminal escapes from Alcatraz, he's not thinking about what the warden's doing <laughs> or uh, how, you know, everything is working out back at the prison right. or where he was. He's thinking about this is opportunity, he's taking advantage of it, he's out of here. This is focuses on the world, the things that are waiting for him there. The same thing would be true to Luciferians. Praise the Lord, okay. They're going to be like a dog that suddenly released, has been chained up for years and years and years. This, it's gone. It's, gone. it's after uh, its own uh, particular um, aggrandizements. But the, 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 the point I'm getting to is that everything is knee-jerk reaction. There are no plans or strategies no, involved. No. Just do whatever's at the top of your mind. Because everybody's going to be doing his own thing. Sure. And no two are going to be alike. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thus he said, the fourth beast will be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Now, what does it mean, shall devour the whole earth? When you devour something, you swallow it. Yep. Well, how's the fourth empire going to swallow the world? Through its influence. Through its influence. It's going to totally uh, envelop everything on the earth under its own influence. Having said that, Scripture teaches 
the fourth empire will be led by Satan who is called the king of Sishak. Turn to Jeremiah 25, verse 26. <clears throat> and all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth. And the king of Sishak shall drink after them. The king of Sishak destroys the kingdoms of this world through the leadership of the fourth empire, which is altered from every other kingdom that ever existed. <clears throat> So here we have Daniel dovetailing with Jeremiah telling us the same thing. This reality is going out of existence. Mm. It'll be a reality <clears throat> from which <clears throat> the human race will never be able to look back at its past. Because its past can be eradicated in a reality in which it's chained and enslaved and unable to do anything other than what's being forced upon it to um, observe and to live by. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture teaches after this <clears throat> the Lord will return to gather the prototokos to assign communities in Israel back to its land. Turn to the Gospel of John, 10th chapter, verse 16. And other sheep I have, <coughs> which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. Bring where? To their folds. And they shall hear my voice. Can't emphasize this enough. They shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. What's he saying here? <coughs> Those that are being gathered are all going to hear his voice. They're going to be in union. They're going to yield to his guidance, his direction, to take them to the place that is reserved for them. them. Israel is going to be brought back to its fold. It's not part of the other folds but it belongs to him anyway. Turn to Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. When the Most High, Elion, Elohim, divided to the nations their inheritance, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So he divides <coughs> to the sons of Adam an inheritance which is apart from the people of Israel. When does this happen? This happens when he comes to gather the sheep. Turn to Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 9 to 10.
<coughs> Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Notice what it says in verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So when he gathers them, who? The sons of Adam? Why is it called the sons of Adam? Because it's talking about <clears throat> the tribe nation, tongue, culture in which the Prototokos resides, he is going to be gathered to the place assigned to him, which is his inheritance as a son of God. He will develop in this this community which is his inheritance being prepared for the time in which he will depart the earth for his position in eternity when a saint loses his crown because he didn't do what he's supposed to do <clears throat> and another saint takes his crown mm -hmm. does that saint now with two crowns become greater in christ than he ever would have been sure does he now have a higher position than he previously would have had? Sure. Mm. He's expanded. So does that say that he can move, just for example, he can move from elder to priest? No. No. So it's, it's within the calling. Yeah. Now, what we want to focus on is this progression. <clears throat> the current Adamic order falls. Fourth Empire dominates it. The Lord returns, sets up the communities for the prototokos. With this backdrop, we want to go into the scriptures with this understanding. It's very important that we see this as an understanding. Now, scripture teaches some of the communities that will be established will be areas claimed by the fourth empire kings. You're going to have overlapping. The fourth empire has established dominion over the earth, devoured the earth, sectioned it among themselves. Lord returns, gathers his, and distributes the inheritance of the saints. Some of it is going to overlap the Luciferians' dominion. Take a look at one example of hey, this. Sir, Joey, let me ask a question. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm glad we're bre breaching, broaching this subject because i got to shake my earthly ability to ascertain. Now, we see he is a, a, a portioning, he is appointing a equal amount or a decided amount of inheritance per son are they equal in measurement or is it there's so many things that are involved you can't really when you say equal in, in what respect is this equality? measurement measurement no well, everything is spiritually uh discerned so so when all of us inherit everything that's a true statement, but my everything has different things than your everything. Is that true? Yes, but that's in a different classification. What we're looking at here deals with the earth, deals with the community, with individuals that are being prepared for something that they've been called to do. We're talking about an area, a plot of land that's being distributed to specific groups for a specific purpose, for a specific time. So your inheritance includes the responsibility for certain individuals that you are well equipped to to teach them. Yes. Yes. And so is that the main 
part of our inheritance? No. No. It has to do with developing <coughs> the, the latent prototokis identity that has to come forth. <coughs> the teachers are going to be the movers and shakers of the communities. <coughs> the students are going to be the community inhabitants. The setup deals with how the Lord directs everybody into the position that they're going to be directed into, establishes <coughs> the hierarchy over each community. That sets everything in motion. Then you go into what you read in the book of Revelation. The seven churches of Asia Minor, they've been established now. <coughs> they're going to go forth and be taught and become prepared for what <coughs> is waiting for them in eternity, yes. So Mr. Jones, what is the desire, the, the, what is the appropriate response as a son of God who's heading for his inheritance? Is he to desire wisdom to run the thing better the way Solomon did and then he gets other things included in, in his inheritance or is it what what's the most important thing for a son to do before he receives his inheritance well it's not looked at that way first and foremost these are babes they have to be taught the, 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 the community is their schoolroom the angel over the community is the teacher. Mm -hmm. This is all preliminary. It's being set up for them to be established so that they can begin to comprehend what's waiting for them. The preliminary is the teacher has prepared them by feeding them on the way to where they're going to go. When the beginning of sorrow starts, the teachers go into immediate activation the faithful servant is going to be given people to feed he's feeding them preparing them not for the overall he's preparing them for the community that they're going to be in incorporated into he's preparing them he's taking them from the earth centered life that they knew is suddenly interrupted to the identity of an elder. That's all he's preparing them for. When they get to the community, that's where it starts. What okay, you're Brother talking Jones, about. I'm, I'm actually <coughs> looking for a little bit more specific, but let's do it this way. I'm going to say what I do. When I, before I study, I say, Father, you created me. You know what position I'm going to be in. Father, allow the situation, allow me to understand, give me the scriptures, do something that makes me better qualified than I currently am for the position that you've, that you've appointed me. I'm not just going to wait around and see what he gives me and then figure out what to do. I'm, that's why I'm asking Joseph, what's the appropriate thing that a son of God will do before he gets his inheritance? I would, I would like to he hear... You will be doing what you're doing now. You're looking at it from the perspective of a teacher. I'm focusing on the perspective of the student. The student knows nothing. The teacher is everything the student knows. What you just told me is what you're going to be imparting to the student, preparing him for the community. You already know all you need to know as far as that's concerned. This person has no identity. They have no comprehension. Their world has just been shattered. So what you have to do is to give them a stable foundation that they can begin to comprehend. Remember, we said it's a new reality. Yeah. You're going to have to give them an understanding oh. of everything they're experiencing because there's nobody else that can. Sure. Outside of you, all they're going to have is a lying, Luciferian society to, dare to gobble them up. Literally, what we're going to be doing, Mr. Jones, in my terms, because I'm the one who's coining the phrase, mm -hmm. we are going to get the creation to the original appointed yes. position. Yes, yes, <coughs> yes. But let's continue. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. We said some of the communities will be in areas claimed by the Fourth Empire kings. We're going to look at one example of that. 
One example of this is the area claimed by Satan, called Satan's seat, which he will establish at the great <coughs> release of the Fourth Empire Kings. <coughs> In other words, <coughs> when the Fourth Empire is established, everybody is released to take up an estate on the earth. <coughs> Lucifer is the first one that establishes seat, his estate. Everybody else is establishing his own estate. With this picture in mind, now these are continue. estates which they previously held. No. Who assigns these estates? Occasion. Occasion. Okay. Remember, the human race has right. been running the show. The Luciferians now released to take dominion over what the humans have forfeited. So it's pure, purely opportun opportunistic. Opportunistic. Okay. <coughs> now, <coughs> the Lord will assign the reestablished community of Pergamos. This is the same place of Lucifer as a seat. And assign an angel of the assembly of Pergamos to protect it. Mm -hmm. It will be protected until it allows the Luciferian influences to corrupt it. In Revelation, second chapter, verse 12 to 13. And to the angel of the church, the church community in Pergamos, write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. So what we find here, how did Satan's seat come to be? It was a dominion that Satan dominated before the Lord assigned the saints, the area of Pergamos. Okay. And now holdest fast my name and is not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Now what we find here is a picture. You have Satan who was the original <coughs> dominator of this region is called his seat. The Lord descends from heaven. He gathers the prototokos. He assigns on a global scale communities. Pergamos is an example of a community of the prototokos that sits smack on Lucifer's dominion that he chose. He can't do anything about it because the Lord has assigned the Prototokos community there. He can't do anything about it because it's got angelic protection over right. it. <clears throat> the community is taught for a certain period of time, bringing it up to understanding its purpose, its plan, the coming of the Lord in the rapture, the position waiting for it in heaven to e the whole nine yards is taught to this community, Pergamos. After they gain comprehension, knowledge, the door is going to be open for them to be tested. They have to qualify, just like we have to qualify. Well, our qualification comes before theirs. Our qualification, those that qualify and make it become teachers of the prototokos that are going to be released at the beginning of sorrows. In this respect, the teacher goes on to angelic status, oversees the community from the heavens, protects it. After the time of the teaching ends, and it always is going to end, you're going to have in a community basic understanding, foundational teaching, leading to what? 
the maturity of the saint. What happens when the saint becomes mature? He steps into his position in the right. community. Right. He carries out what he's been called to do in the community. This is exactly what happens at Pergamos. Mm. But when the door opens for the Luciferian influence to enter in, you're going to have an element that yields to it. Sure. When they yield to it, it weakens the ability of the protection of that community. Just like in the church. The church, if a person's committing sin, and everybody understands, knows what's going on, you've gone into a point where you've jeopardized the sanctity of that church community. This is a little leaven leavens the whole lump. This is what we have here. <clears throat> Just a quick point. Yes. As that happens, the influence of the Protodicus community in Pergamus, mm -hmm. does the enemy believe, does Satan believe that somehow he is getting back his seat? Sure. Mm. This is all, that's his whole game plan. Anyway, okay. we'll take a look at this. How this deals with Antipas, who was a martyr. Mm. <clears throat> I know that, verse 13, I know that works where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, Thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. Even those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Now, what we find here, they're being commended for standing steadfast in the faith, not denying it. Well, if that's true, why did Antipas become a martyr? Somebody killed him. What? happened is you have a division in the community. These stood faithful. Others did not. Notice what it goes on to say. But I have a few things against thee because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. This is the problem. These are faithful. He commends them for being faithful, for standing for him. But he also criticizes them because they allowed their brethren who became corrupted to continue to flourish in the community. That's why Antipas was martyred. They allowed the corrupting influence to grow in the community. They stood steadfast in their faith as a group, but they didn't do anything to confront what was going on in the rest of the community. Antipas did. It cost him his life. The Lord sees this, and he tells them, I've got this against you because you did not go against these, all the doctrine of Balaam, all the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, these things you know I hate. But you did not do anything to confront them. Then he goes on. <clears throat> Repent, verse 16. Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them, those that hold this doctrine, with the sword of my mouth. So what he's saying here, <clears throat> even though they've been faithful, even though they have not sinned, even though he commends them, he's telling them, <clears throat> repent. What does that mean? That means you begin to confront these that are deviant, these that are having corrupted influences in this community. Otherwise, I'm going to come on you quickly, and I'm going to take care of them, which is exactly what happened. These probably missed the rapture. And the other ones probably got went under judgment because they knew better. So the ones who were righteous but still allowed it to go, in other words, didn't confront, they missed the rapture. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Now, this all happened in Satan's seat. Which brings us to the next principle. Although the group is faithful, they have weakened their angelic protection. <clears throat> A 
allowing Antipas to be martyred because they failed to drive out those who live under the Luciferian influence. <coughs> now, scripture teaches after the rapture, Satan will take total control of this region and later give it to the Antichrist. Revelation 13, verse 1 to 2. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a great beast rise up out of the sea. It's the fourth empire. Having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So he's looking at here symbolically the fourth empire devouring the earth. <clears throat> Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet is the feet of a bear. His mouth is the mouth of a lion. It's talking about <clears throat> the king's of the fourth empire, uh, Daniel talks about the same thing. King arises, he looks like a leopard. Another one rises, he looks like a bear. Another one arises, he looks uh, <clears throat> like a lion. Leopard. Yeah. Uh, basically, the two are compatible here, describing the fourth empire and its activities once it's free to dominate the surface world again. Then it comes to the, <coughs> the Antichrist. <coughs> and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and his seat and great authority. So Pergamos, the region where this church was at the time of the rapture, it's going to be over, overwhelmed by the Luciferians under Satan. The Christian is going to be taken into captivity to it, imprisoned by it, most of them eventually martyred. And then <clears throat> it's going to endure until the time of the Antichrist, who Satan, who is in, this is, the, this is the capital of the fourth empire. Satan is going to turn it all over to the Antichrist. This is his seat in great power and authority. This is not the harlot city. This is another region. <clears throat> but this region is influential in the time of the rise of the fourth empire. And basically in the center of it, according to what the Lord is saying, Satan's seat is his, his throne, his headquarters, if you will. <clears throat> it's going to ultimately be dominated by him for the duration of the tribulation period. It was once a church community, but the church community allowed it to become corrupted, didn't do what it was supposed to do, and came under a judgment. The judgment basically gave it all into the hands of the Luciferians. <coughs> Having said that, <coughs> we have an object lesson here. What's the object lesson? The object lesson is the Lord is giving us an understanding through his word of future events that are going to take place after the fall of this current order. The Prototokos teachers are going to be instrumental in bringing forth the truth of the kingdom of God. You're going to hear the message of the kingdom. It's going to be given to us to be the custodians of this mystery, to give it to our brothers who are being brought out of darkness into light, to prepare them so that they have perfect understanding and they're prepared. It's going to be for the prototokers to prepare them for exactly what's going to happen in the individual community that that elder group is in. If you're over a community, you're going to read this and it's going to tell you what the destiny of that community will be. A community like Philadelphia is not going to be overrun, even though they make the rapture. It's going to be preserved because it's righteous. And the Lord is going to protect it 
before the time in which the saints come back and set up the kingdom of God. Instrumental in feeding God's flock, preparing them for the things that they're going to have to endure. You're going to have people come out of <coughs> places like Iran, <coughs> Russia, China. They have no truth being given to them at all. So you're going to have to treat them as babes in total ignorance. The only thing they have is a willingness to understand what you're going to feed them. And you're going to prepare them depending upon what you do, what you pour into them. It's going to either strengthen them or weaken them for the events that they've got to deal with during the tribulation era or pre-rapture era. So the scripture is telling us we have a very important position here. And we need to take all the time we can to study and prepare for it because other lives are depending upon what you do here.